my friends, a new dawn is here. Hot damn. Who saw, I mean, who didn't see the keynote? I already opened the box. Come on. You didn't think I was saving it for this video. <laughs> I opened it days ago. Couple quick things before we dive in. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that in a minute. And this laptop was provided by Apple for review. So thank you to my friends there for giving me a little bit of an early look at how this thing works and performs. Look at this thing. <gasps> It looks like the old MacBook Pros. It's kind of chunky. Like if you just had a quick glance at this and you didn't know, you might be like, oh, that dude hasn't updated his MacBook in a while. False. This is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro, fully stocked, fully stacked, fully jacked. <laughs> Eight terabytes of storage. That is absurd. Eight terabytes. I'm never buying an external ever again. They brought all the ports back, which is great because everyone's like rejoicing, including Apple, even though they're the ones that took them away in the first place. You've got an SD card slot back full size hdmi on the side yes please better than a dongle so i'll take i'll take anything usb-c on the side two more usb-c's on the other side you've got a headphone jack back and mag safe this laptop reminds me a lot of what's happening in cameras these days you're seeing new tech and new cameras come out that have everything in them they're raw they're 8k they're shooting super fast frames per second there's so many frame rate options everything is just stacked into one epic tool that used to be an entire host of tools and the same thing is kind of happening with laptops with computers Computers. You just have editing suites. I grew up and remember my dad in the basement getting an editing suite installed into one of our spare offices. And I walked down one day thinking, what in the hell is this? What are you doing? It looked like a scene out of the Chernobyl miniseries when they're all inside the nuclear reactor and there's just buttons and screens and huge consoles everywhere. You move forward, you've got bigger computers doing bigger tasks. Skip all the nonsense to now, you have smaller computers doing bigger tasks. If you're on a flight and you need to edit a project, you toss on your headphones, noise cancel them out, flip open this laptop and you have every tool at your disposal to completely crush any project no matter what camera what footage what codec whatever goes into it we could talk about benchmarks we could talk about specs we could talk about what else it's stacked with all day long how many times have i said stack should we have a stack counter in this thing stack 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 <laughs> just crushed 45 minutes of Kirk's life stack. You drop R5 footage into a laptop, crushed no matter what. R5 has the worst codec as far as editing goes, constantly having to transcode footage. That's happening in the background while you're also still trying to edit something. But oh, can you edit something while you're transcoding if you're using the Premiere or Adobe Suite? No, I mean, you can, but it's going to be very slow. Maybe you're working on a title sequence in After Effects, like something like this for the new pirate channel. Oh, I've said too much. Don't show anymore. Cut it right there, Kirk. Can you do all those things simultaneously whilst listening to music, emails coming through? Probably not. Now you can, unplugged, without the fans even coming on. Without this thing even getting hot, it'll just take whatever you give it and slap you back in the face. So to put this to the test, I figured we would open up a project that's physically pretty demanding on the computer. Recently, I made a video for the newly announced R3 camera, and that timeline was, it was a hog. We had a lot of R3 footage in there. We had a lot of R5 footage in there. We had GoPro footage in there. There was a lot of different codecs and things happening. So I figured I would load up that project, export it while also editing your photos. Because yes, this is a special comeback episode of editing your photos where I ask you guys to send me your raw pictures and I edit them as best as I can. Again, not saying that I make them better, maybe I make them worse. It's just fun to be able to edit things that aren't necessarily my style in my photos. So let's start the export. Let's get into the screen share and start editing your photos. All right, first up is a photo from Patrick K. This is a beautiful photo from Spirit Island. First up, this photo looks great. I've never been to Spirit Island. I would love to go. And it looks like you got it at the most optimal time of year. The snow is covering the mountains. It's almost bucket shot-esque. I'm gonna be, by the way, mostly using my new presets on all these photos. That probably sounds like a shameless plug because <laughs> it is. They're not released yet, but I use them as a base layer. They don't always get me to where I want straight off on one click. Like most presets don't, you kind of got to click it. It starts it off and then I edit from there. Think of it like if you're making bread, you need the starter. 
presets, that's my starter. I'm gonna start with Sand Trap on this one and then go up and raise the exposure. Also, I don't know why I'm getting all of these tips and pop-ups from Lightroom right now. It's, maybe it's because I haven't used it on this computer yet. It thinks that I need all of the assistance. Maybe I do. Desaturate the greens. Basically my plan and what I like to do is come up with a system before I start editing. So I know that I want this to be overly blue in tone, brighten it up a little bit, keep that fog, but maybe bring a bit of a gradient down on the sky to just punch it out a little bit more. Because it's so foggy, this was probably shot early in the morning or just after blue hour. I wanna bring some definition back in the sky. This is the before and Patrick, that is my after. So it's still on that moody side because that is my style, but beautiful photo. Thanks so much for sending it in. Hope you like it. And you can check out Patrick's Instagram right here. Next up is a shot from Tobias Grossman. He says, hey Pete, started photography two years ago, did my first steps with your tutorials, and now it's not just a hobby anymore. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for watching, and I'm glad that you found some use out of these. Um, this banger shot, he says, I like that you referenced it as a banger, is in the Swiss Alps with one of my biker friends. So recently, when I edit moto stuff, I've really liked, probably because I'm inspired by Aaron Brimhall and shooting with him, I soaked in all sorts of tips, but I love to lift the shadows and make it slightly less contrasty, especially with all the fog you got rolling in over the trees here. It looks so good. Sand Trap has just been my go-to. So I'm going to start with that, go from there, go ahead down here to the curve, lift those blacks up a little bit, get rid of that contrast, play with the grain. I'm going to remove a little bit of the blue because we've got mostly earth tones here. I just don't want it to be vibrant. I think a little more muted, especially with all of the dirt, just lends to the activity better. And that is the before and that is the after. I'm pumped on that. I wish I could post that to my gram. Tobias, you didn't link your Instagram account, but if Kirk's able to find it, we'll pop it up right here. Otherwise, thank you so much for submitting. All right, next up, we've got a shot from Almos Bechtold. He says, this is a drone shot uh, that I did in Montenegro, and it was one of my bucket shots. That's sick. Wow, you can really see the entire, this is great. Okay, so first things first, what I like to do, again, this is to my style, I'm not saying this, there's any right or wrong to this, all personal preference. I'm going with my Paradise preset on that. Look how much it makes everything just vibrant and island-like. It looks good, it's just a little too happy of <laughs> looking for me. So I need that photo to be desaturated in the blues, desaturated in the greens, and give it more of like a deep, deep aqua look. It's like when you see a swimming pool, sometimes you can can get swimming pools that have that deep kind of black lake look to them or you can have like a really vibrant blue liner i prefer that black kind of lake looking pool just because it fits the aesthetic that i am drawn to more so that's also what i do in my photos so most of the work i did here was in the hsl tabs which is the hue saturation and luminance let's take a look at the before and this is the after hopefully you like what i did with your bucket shot yeah that looks great man i hope you didn't get arrested i guess you didn't well done I don't condone getting arrested or doing any of those things. Follow the rules. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for you to be able to create, I like to call it a little bit of an online world, a website, a place to host podcasts, sell products, make an online gallery, a place where clients can contact you and talk and make business. If you don't have a website, that's the first thing you should probably be doing. So after you check out these tasty details of the new Mac Pro and watch all of your photos get edited, you can take those photos and put them on your portfolio with ease. Templates are always changing. Award-winning templates, award-winning customer service, award-winning everything. Use code McKinnon at checkout for 10% off your order. Little hack here, pro tip. I usually include this tip in all of my videos, but you can use that code even if you're renewing or setting up something for anyone. It, it's pretty much just 10% off all the time. So code is in the description. Hit the link down there, enter McKinnon and get yourself started on your brand new website using Squarespace. I say all these things whilst it's taking me almost a year to get my website up and running, but I'm, I'm, I'm very particular about things. Everything's gotta be perfect and all my ducks need to be in a row. It's pretty elaborate. It looks great. There's a full online store, shop, everything will be under one roof. The umbrella that is me will be found at petermckinnon.com.
squarespace.com. So that's all run and powered by Squarespace. And I'm super excited because then I can start using that as an example when we talk about Squarespace and websites. All right, back to, back to tech things. Have a great week. Next up, we have a shot of an eagle from someone by the name of Sword. If that's your first name, that's rad. Sword says, one thing that has always captivated me about photography is capturing a moment that will never be seen again unless photographed. Wow, you got that thing coming in hot. That is so sick. I already know what preset I want to use on this as my base is called Drift. It kind of desaturates everything, but it'll leave those earth tones like the browns and the oranges in that eagle. That's a crazy shot. I'm gonna put two small masks under the wings just to illuminate a little bit of detail of the feathers underneath because it's mostly gone. Now you don't wanna go too much, less is more. Sometimes, and you've probably been here before, if you edit a photo, save it, don't post it. Come back the next day and look at it again. You might either love it or you're gonna think the complete opposite. You're gonna think, wow, I can't believe I did that. Glad I didn't post it. Let's try that again. And I've done that many, many times. I've been there. I put mountains and deserts. I've been there. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the before. This is the after sword. I hope you like that. That photo is incredible. Also super jealous that your dad has bald eagles in his backyard. That is something I can't say. I do have blue jays though. They're super annoying, but they mimic other bird sounds. How cool is that? Fun fact. You guys didn't think you'd learn that in a MacBook pro review. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a photo from, I'm going to call you Jess. By the way, fantastic email with all the camera settings, a Dropbox link about the photo, about you, your Instagram. This is just so perfectly put together. I'm very, very impressed. This photo that you captured is absolutely phenomenal. Literally, you don't even need to edit this photo. If that's just the raw, you could fully upload it like that and just Bob's your uncle, Fran's your aunt. I'm going to throw drift on this. Might kill a bit of the fall tones, but I think it'll look good after we manipulate it a little bit. You're probably saying, Pete, you seem to use drift and sand trap quite a bit. Yep. Between the few Instagram grids that I run, those presets are primarily the ones I use for just about everything. So I'm gonna go a little bit less is more on this, a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of clarity, but the preset almost straight off just gets it to exactly where I want it. I would print this and hang it in my office. So great job. Thanks again for watching and thanks for submitting your photos. All the Instagram links for everyone who submitted photos are in the description below as well. If we can find them, we'll try to pop them up on screen. Let's check on that export. How's that export doing? We're on second pass. It's pretty good. We're flying through these right now. All right, next up is a portrait from someone that didn't include their name, but they did say, hey, Pete, you are on my bucket list. I hope I can meet you one day and take your portrait. That would be rad. It says, this is one of the photos of the portrait sessions that I took earlier this month with Kevin. I'm gonna start with Captain's Reserve on this one. This is one of my favorites for an Instagram account I run called Pete's Pirate Life. Use that one a lot. So I'm gonna start there, drag down the exposure, drag down the highlights, a little bit of contrast, add more black to that, and up the grain. Grain on portraits just looks so good. Sometimes I see people in the comments saying, why is it so grainy? That's all me. So then what I wanna do is actually fade in a little bit of a mask, darkening the right side of the image because the light is coming from the left. I think it'll pop more. And taking a look at the before and the after, that is how I would edit this portrait. Thanks so much for sending in a photo. And again, links in the description. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a photo from John Jordan. And in the email body, it just says, thanks, Pete. So thanks, Jordan. There's no information about this photo, but I do know where it is. That is Pito Lake in Banff, Alberta. That lake looks like a wolf. Kind of see the ears and where the snout would be. Beautiful spot, small little hike to get there. Again, you got this where it's like half frozen, which is pretty cool. This requires very little work. As you can see, all I'm doing are a lot of the same adjustments that I've done in the rest of the photos, but I'm gonna send this over to photo Photoshop because I want to throw a little bit of snow in there. So I've got a snow filter here that I'm going to paste over top, size that down and go to the screen blending mode. I'm going to open up the levels for that and just drag that out. So it's again, less is more, not too much snow because I don't want it to look obvious that it's fake. You might be able to tell, you might not. I think it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the before 
and the after, and that is my edit. John, thanks so much for submitting. And that concludes all the photos that I will be editing today. There were so many, and I actually did edit like 15 more, but having to cut some of that down. Let me know in the comments below two things. One, what do you think of this laptop? Because it crushed that export. Two, should I do more editing your photos? Because it's mobile, I could probably do this anywhere. And I forgot how much fun this was. <laughs>